Hi and welcome to this video in which we talk about the digital elevation model, how we produce it and what we can do with them. So what's a digital elevation model? A digital elevation model is a digital data set describing the shape of the Earth's surface. So basically each point on the Earth's surface gets a height value. The term digital elevation model or DEM is more a summary and uh, includes digital service models and digital terrain models. A digital service model here in blue DSM is the earth including objects on it. So it describes the earth surface including for example vegetation and buildings. Whereas the digital terrain model DTM is only the service without any vegetation and buildings. You can see it in red here. So it's important to differentiate between the digital service model and the digital terrain model, but both are digital elevation models. You can see here again here the digital service model with vegetation, so the forest and buildings, whereas the digital terrain model gives me an insight behind the trees or below the trees and that's what much more uh, important for orienteering map making so you really see here all the tracks, the pits and the ditches or gullies and so on. So why do we need a digital elevation model? With a digital elevation model we can create uh, contour lines for example for that we need the terrain model and also sh uh, as we have seen before we can create the hill shadings hill shading maps also with the digital terrain model or in OCAD you need the digital elevation model to run the root analyzer so the that the root analyzer so that the root analyzer can uh, calculate the fastest route con with considering the height when you have a digital service model and a digital elevation model, you can subs uh, subtract these two and get the difference. And with this difference, you can uh, visualize the vegetation. How does it work in OCAD? In OCAD, there is the TEM import wizard. And in this TEM import wizard, you can add input data. This can be uh, LiDAR files, these LAST files, it can also be some ASCII files or uh, GeoTIFFs. So we have uh, different file formats which uh, can serve as input. Then OCAD uh, creates an internal uh, digital elevation model and saves it in an internal file format. And when we talk about loading a digital uh, elevation model in OCAD. We talk about uh, loading this internal file into OCAD and with this file we can create the outputs as we have seen before. So for example we can create a digital terrain model in this internal file format or digital service model or this uh, difference with which we can calculate the vegetation height. And when we have uh, such a digital elevation model loaded, such an internal digital elevation model, this is shown with a blue frame in OCAD. So now switch to OCAD. Here I have opened a map and now we want to create a digital elevation model. For that I go to the oops, for that I go to the DEM menu and open the DEM import wizard. Here I can add importable files. As shown before, I have these different files as uh, that can serve me as an input. So first I choose this uh, ASCII files which represent the digital terrain model. I open it and I can see here coordinate system that the map has uh, the Swiss grid as coordinate system 
and the DEM files typically has the same coordinate system but I can also uh, change this if needed. As an extent I have by default uh, selected all points but if you have a really big digital elevation model you can also like here add an uh, extent or define an extent that goes also by selecting an object first in OKIT so you can for example just quickly draw an object and select this object if I go back to the DEM import wizard then only the points within the extent of the selected object before will be analyzed and, ca and, and considered. So I click on next. And now all the points are analyzed by OKIT. And here I see a summary of the of the points in the files, so how many points there are. And I can also change the grid size if needed. So I can go for a um, lower resolution grid, but that's fine for me here. I can also change the file name or the file location. And here I can define which outputs I'd like to create. For that example, I just want to create this internal OCAD uh, model, so I do not select any of this. I also see that some products I cannot even select. For example, this classify vegetation height, this is due to the input data. The input data is the digital elevation model. Uh, the di digital terrain model and I cannot create a vegetation height map with it. For that I would need LiDAR data or both digital terrain model and digital service model. So I go to next and that went quite fast and I see here now this internal DEM that has been created and loaded and that is shown now with this blue frame. I can also go to the EM menu again and see the information. And now I can also, in an, in an additional step, I could still create contour lines, hill shading maps, and so on, uh, because this internal DEM is loaded. What I can also do is uh, create an optimized DEM for course setting purpose. I mentioned the root analyzer before. So I can click this function and use my loaded DEM and save it, for example, as external file or embed it directly in the map file. So I save it as external file. And if I check here, you see that my uh, original DEM had a size of about 7 megabytes and now the optimized DEM is much, much smaller and that makes it easier to pass it to course setters. For example, here, now I'm in the course setting edition. I open a course setting project and now I can go to the DEM menu, open and I can either, I can of course also uh, open the original DEM but it's much more convenient to have this optimized DEM which is much much smaller and has no quality loss uh, compared with the original DEM when it comes to root calculation. So you see here now it's uh, loaded and I could now run the OCAD root analyzer. So let's go back to the orienteering edition again and here I close the uh, no here first I'd like to embed also these opti the optimized DEM so I click to embed directly in the map file and then I will save my original map in 
like that and now it's embedded into the map file and when I go to the core setting edition again and uh, remove this ma map and open now the map with the embedded DEM you see also the file size is bigger than the original map file you can see also that the DEM is already loaded now because it has the map file has the optimized DEM embedded but here I close the DEM and I also remove the embedded DEM again so as a next step we want to create the vegetation height maps for that I run the DEM import wizard again uh, I add again this uh, terrain model and this time I add also a service model these are these uh, two GeoTIFF files the, these are uh, service models and then I have on the left side my terrain model and on the right side the same extent uh, a service model and with these two files I can create the vegetation height this time I take all the points And we again uh, analyze these two files. And I choose again a different name. And I check this classify vegetation height. Then in the next uh, on the next page I see the settings and I I leave the settings as they are and I also load the exported map directly as background map afterwards. Then I click on create and you see the digital service model and the digital terrain model were created as internal OCAD uh, models and now the vegetation height map is shown. Again, I close my internal OCAD uh, elevation model and I also remove the background map. And as a last thing, we now uh, want to analyze uh, LiDAR data. So we click again, add, and choose these two last files. Here on the settings page, I choose this time a different grid resolution. I think one meter is enough for my purpose. Again, I change the uh, file name. And this time, I want to also create contour lines, hill shading maps, slope gradient maps, and this vegetation base map. Then I click next. and last files are point clouds so out of this point cloud I can calculate a digital terrain model and a digital service model for that I have to press the button choose DTM so for the digital terrain model all my ground points will be considered and the last returns of the laser pulses and for the digital service model I choose this button and all the points will be uh, considered and of course these are the first return points I could also create a classification map or an intensity map if needed then we are on the create contour lines page I can create not smooth contours and I also can create smooth contours the smooth contours are based on a smooth elevation model on uh, very convenient for orienteering map making for new maps and also for updating old maps as you will see later and I load symbols from template that will add me some additional symbols in my symbol set and here I can uh, assign the symbols to the outputs
Oops. And also I can use different symbols for depressions if needed. Then I go to next and here's the page uh, for the hill shading. I leave the settings and just activate this button load exported map as background map when done and also here I leave the slope gradient settings and here the vegetation height map we have also already talked about it before I can change for example the, uh, the colors or also the, the intervals then I click next and now all the outputs uh, are calculated and of course depending on how much data you process this may take a little while so the calculations is now done in the DM wizard and we will have a look at the outputs first we look at the contour lines for that I hide all the background maps and we see these uh, blue contour lines they are quite shaky compared to the green contour lines which are based on a smooth uh, elevation model and especially in constant slopes or in open areas these green contour lines can really taken over mostly directly into the map file then let's unhide the background maps and hide the map then we have the vegetation height map where you see the vegetation heights for example, the high trees here in the forest are shown with per in, shown in purple and the lower vegetation in green and yellow colors. And it's really useful for mapping, especially also in the urban areas where you can see hedges and spot easily single trees. Then we have the slope gradient map and the hill shading map. They are both quite similar. There you can see very well the terrain, for example, the roads and small paths or small gullies, which you cannot see in the contour lines. And last but not least, we have this vegetation base map, which is quite similar to the vegetation height map, but it shows the vegetation a bit in a different way, and both can be useful for map making. In the view menu I can switch to draft mode, of course I have to unhide the map and now I can with the slider show the map and the background map at once. You see that there is still a blue frame about my map, that means that an internal DM is still loaded. You can check that here in the info button that there is an internal DEM loaded, a digital elevation model. I see also here in the status bar that elevation is shown and there is no ele elevation shown outside my DEM. If needed, you can go to the DEM and recalculate uh, contour lines or, for example, hill shading maps and uh, calculate them with different settings. But now I close my digital elevation model and that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something about the digital elevation model and how you can use it. Bye bye and see you next time.